As we've seen throughout this DCR data series, there is a wealth of information on offer to help you better understand how the project is performing. DCR data is the place if you need to validate information for Decred's hybrid blockchain. The data here is collected from on-chain information with no manipulation or fact distortion. The Block Explorer is just one of the reasons blockchain is an improvement over traditional markets. Transparency is the key to a better, fairer system. Don't trust, verify. In this video, we're going to look at DCR Data's market page as a staging point for our series using Decred's decentralized exchange. In the distribution area, we get the current exchange rate in US dollars. If you click on the exchange rate link, it will take you to the market page. This is also available in the main menu under the market link. On this page, we also see the DCR value in US dollars, but we're actually looking at the DCR BTC markets across several exchange platforms. This can be confusing, but currently the best way to buy and sell DCR is through BTC. There are other trades, but they currently don't have as much liquidity or their secondary markets. In both cases, you will end up paying higher fees or have a higher margin for slippage. This is where the market moves away from the price that you're expecting to pay. On the left, we start with the price of DCR in dollars, and then we have the main Decred markets, all of which, as said before, are BTC DCR pairs. The main market for Decred are Binance and Dex.Decred.org. Hobie and Bittrex have good levels of volume, but all too often the main action happens on Binance. DCR DEX has gradually built up momentum and will continue to do so as it becomes easier to use and more functional and gets more trading pairs. The aggregate area might interest those who are looking to create profit from arbitrage in the discrepancies between exchanges. The final section on the left is the Bitcoin indices. This section shows the current price of a Bitcoin using Coinbase's current average price and Coindesk's XBX price index that evaluates average, average prices across several exchanges and is touted to be the most reliable index for Bitcoin price. In the main area of the market page, you get the price chart. Initially, this is set to aggregate mode in depth chart view, which stacks all the exchanges and their information. Each exchange is color coded, Binance being yellow and DCR DEX being blue, etc. In the middle, you have the market price with buy and sell bids either side. Buy DCR on the left and sell DCR on the right. There's always a discrepancy between the market price and the closest buy and sell bids. These can be anything from a fraction of a percent upwards. This discrepancy is what makes the market. You can consider this to be a kind of a tug of war, which depending on the sell or buy pressure, will move the price either up or down. It's important to note the price is rarely the price. For instance, if you exchange at the market price, the order will actually get filled with the closest bids, which means you pay the slippage fees associated with where the closest bids were in the order books. This is the same whether you are buying or selling at market value. This is sometimes referred to as being a market taker and anyone who places a bid is known as a market maker. There are benefits to both. If you want a quick purchase, being a taker is best. If you can wait and want to get a better price and make more profit, then being a maker is best. But be aware, the waiting times can be considerable and it can be quite disheartening if the market moves away from your position. As a final note, buy and sell walls occur either side of the market price. These can be good indicators for the direction the market intends to move in. The walls can change very quickly. For instance, if a wall appears on the left for people buying DCR, but there is no wall on the right people selling DCR, the likelihood is the price will go up, as sell pressure is minimal. This of course is not always the case. These walls can also indicate the acceptable price of both buyers and sellers when a wall accumulates around specific price points. For instance, in this chart, the buyers are forming a wall around 0.0014 BTC and the sellers are forming a wall around 0.0018 BTC. Depending on sentiment 
and sell or buy pressure. The price in this instance is likely to move down slightly as the left hand wall is establishing closer to the market price, which acts as a kind of a resistance that the market will pull towards. This could of course change if the wall on the sell side disappears and no one wants to sell at those prices. This is the beauty of an open market where everyone gets to determine the price they want to buy or sell at. Along the top, it's possible to change some settings, like whether you're looking at BTC price or US dollar price, or whether you want a stacked view or a linear line indicator. You can choose to zoom in or out to see the whole market or the market closer to the price. You can also decide whether you want to see all the markets or just one. Out of these options, I find the default settings the most useful. Under the chart option, you have some interesting settings, some of which only work for individual markets. The first chart is the depth chart, which is the one we've been looking at. The second is the order book chart. This allows you to see the individual bids. In the current view, this is showing all of the orders across all of the exchanges, but you can also change this to just show the orders from an individual exchange. For example, Binance or DCR DEX. One thing to watch out for in the aggregated view is green and red orders that cross over. This shows if there's an arbitrage opportunity available across exchanges and how big they might be. The next chart is candlesticks. These only show up when viewing individual exchanges. Candlesticks are a discussion in themselves, but ultimately they show the range of orders across a time period. In the default view, each candle represents one hour. You can also change this to five minutes or one day. The market history chart is probably the most familiar and shows the average price at a particular time without all the range information. The volume chart shows how big the order books are at a given time. When overlaid with the price chart, this can be a good indicator for the liquidity of the market. An important note about volume charts is these figures can be heavily manipulated to give the perception that a project is more liquid than it actually is. It's probably best not to rely too heavily on this information, especially in the case of centralized exchanges where all trades happen off chain. Hopefully that gave you some good insight into how to read Decred exchange data. And as we move forward, we'll revisit this information as we make the calculations for our trades. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you want to show your support, don't forget to give it a like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time.